Hey everybody, happy Sunday. This is going to be day one. It's technically day two of the book club, The Compound Effect. So I give you guys a little, like a little bit of an extra day, like day one, um, April 1st on Saturday was just kind of reading and diving into the chapters. So we, sh we are working on chapter one and chapter two right now. I think we should dive into chapter three. Um, I'll be doing another video shortly. Um, but I've already listened to the audio version twice of chapter one and chapter two with some key takeaways. So this video is designed, designed to give you some action points, which if you have the paper book and you are in the Facebook group and you're watching along live, feel free to post the action points because I don't have the physical copy of the book, so I don't know what he's talking about when he says action points. So if you have that, post it or refer to it. If not, and you're doing the audio like I am, listen to the audio again, maybe a second time and take some notes on it. That's what I've done to kind of keep track of what's been going on and which chapter I'm in on the audio version. So if you guys haven't even read any of the book at all and you're like, what is this? Or I'm falling behind. I want to give you just a little bit of a summary of what's happened in chapter one and chapter two. So Darren Hardy is the publisher of Success Magazine. I actually don't know much more about him than that. So dive in. He does have a blog um, and a website called DarrenDaily.com. And then The Compound Effect, you'll go to TheCompoundEffect.com and then click on Resources. There are, I believe six to eight downloads and resources that we're going to be using throughout the next two weeks in this book club. So go get that for your references. Um, the whole compound effect is so simple in that it's those little daily habits that over time actually develop into something really big, right? So if I ate a donut a day for three years, that's probably going to affect my physique. Versus if I ran a mile every day for three years, that will also affect my physique. So it's those little things that maybe in the moment don't seem like they're really making a big difference or a big impact that over time will add up. So the first thing I want you guys to do is think of an area in your life that you would like to be better. And you probably have maybe one to three or one to five, or maybe you're like, oh my gosh, my life's a mess. I want to do all, all the things at once. Just focus on one, and he says to focus on the one that has the most control over you. So thinking of a couple examples, um, Netflix, staying up too late, maybe eating salty chips at night or eating sweets on the weekends or having to feel like you have to go out to eat all the time or you're drinking every night or whatever it is, whichever one has the most control over you right now. Um, Finances as well is another one. He kind of talked about finances in these first two chapters. If finances is the one, I recommend, I just went through Financial Peace University by Dave Ramsey, and it's funny, Darren Hardy actually mentioned him in the first two chapters. Do Financial Peace University. It's a nine-week course. If finances is the one, I think you need to go longer than just two weeks on focusing on it. For me, I was really reluctant to be put on a budget where somebody tells me what to do, but my outcome from Financial Peace University was actually peace and empowerment, and I get to choose what to do with my money. Nobody else is telling me what to do with my money. I'm telling my money what to do for me. So if it's finances, I'd recommend that one. If it's nutrition, this is going to be a simple one, and I know you've heard it before, but Darren says track it. Pick one week, Get a little notebook, like I have one right here, this little notebook, where you are going to track every single piece of food that's put into your mouth, everything you're drinking, everything you're eating, you just do it for one week. If it is financial, you are writing down every time you spend money, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's online, whether it's at the grocery store, credit card, whatever, you're writing it down. And then within a week, you're going to see, oh my gosh, I spent whatever, $300, and I didn't even know how I spent it, but now it's written down. Same thing with your foods. You start tracking it, you might see, oh wow, I am eating an extra 300 calories each day because I'm sitting down in front of the TV and eating an entire bag of chips. So find out what you want to track, get a little notebook, carry it around with you, commit to it for a week. This book club is two weeks long. So Again, if you're not following along and three chapters is too much for you to read, extend it out to three weeks or four weeks and just watch these videos as you go along. These videos are going to be uploaded to YouTube and then also put 
in a little compact way for you to watch them. So don't worry about, if you feel like you don't have the time, just go at your own pace. But I wanted to talk about um, a couple things that I took away from chapter one and chapter two. I really liked the financial part talking about spending one dollar. Because I'll tell you what, I grew up in a household where we were cheap. We don't spend a lot of money, but we'll go to the Dollar Tree and spend $20 on these little $1 items, like a $1 pen. And he says $1 actually equals $5 compounded over 20 years. So when you look at something, if you're looking to spend $50, you should ask yourself, is it worth spending $250? Because if you would have invested that money and left it in for 20 years, you would have $250. So that's really changed my perspective on just like buying stupid little things um, that I may not really need, especially when you go down to the Dollar Tree and it's stuff that's not going to last. It ends up being junk. Um, I will reveal what my focus is going to be for the first week of tracking. Mine is going to be time management and cleanliness. So I've attacked the financial. I'm getting a handle on the financial. I'm getting a handle on becoming a morning person, making sure I'm setting those things in place, getting to bed early, getting up as early as I'd like to do. But right now what's suffering for me is my time management in making sure that I'm creating good habits to keep my surroundings clean and clutter free. So what I'm going to do is track my time spent on Instagram, on Facebook, on the internet, watching TV, Anything, when I say TV, I don't have cable, um, I have Netflix, I watch a couple shows, but last night I watched, I fell asleep watching it, so I probably watched three or four hours of it. So what I'm going to be tracking is time management from, the, from when I wake up to when I go to bed, where I'm losing time, like where I'm losing 20 minute blocks of time or 30 minutes blocks of time to where I could be cleaning, and then also tracking my habits of what happens when I get home. So what happens when I get home? Do I throw my stuff down? Um, I have dishes from my lunchbox. I should probably just put them in the sink and wash them right away versus letting them pile up in the sink. And then on the weekends, I have all these dishes and I have to reload and unload. So that's what I'm focusing on right now um, is to find a way that's going to streamline my day to day and give me more control over how I'm using my time because I'm working a full-time job running a studio. I'm also running my online business. I'm also partnered with a nutrition company and finding time to do all of these things, as well as just keep a nice clean environment in the house that actually motivates you to come in and get stuff done. So, hey Danny, good to see you. Um, so that's gonna be mine. I'm gonna be tracking that for two weeks. The way I'm going to do it is I do have a daily planner and where I might just use this thing because it's cute and it says hustle on the front and I can keep track. You start a new page each day and you keep track of your time. So keeping track, wake up 6 a.m., takes me 30 minutes to wake up, do my meditation prayer, whatever, do my workouts. And then from there, anytime I'm on Instagram, anytime I'm on Facebook, I love you, Danny, too. I'm good, glad to see you. Hey, Marianne, good to see you. Um, you guys can go back in the beginning and watch this. This replay will be up because um, I know you guys are the first two that just joined. We were just talking about scorecards, which is keeping track of the one thing that you want to change. So mine is going to be time management and cleanliness. Yours might be nutrition, finance. Um, maybe if you're one of those people that's trying to become a morning person, you have to keep track of what's keeping you up at night because you have to get to bed earlier in order to wake up earlier. So keeping track of like, what am I doing at night that's keeping me awake? For me, mine was getting on, on the computer. If I'm on my computer or if I'm on my phone and I'm doing work late at night, I just, I'm all revved up, I'm fired up and I won't be able to go to sleep. So it's creating a routine, turning off the TV, turning off the computer, turning off the phone, getting myself in bed. Um, the next thing that I really took away from chapters one and two was in a relationship, how much ownership do you need to take for it? And if you listen to the chapter or you read the chapters, you're, you're knowing it probably what you and I are both thinking is it's 50, 50. I have 50% responsibility for the relationship. The other person has 50% responsibility of the relationship. Um, yeah, Marianne, you're, you said you're guilty of that too. Yep. Yes. So hopefully you're reading along. If you haven't read along, 
go in, dive into the chapters, but use these little things. Um, we are tracking for a week of our one thing that we want to change and start identifying our habits. Um, but back to ownership. So relationship ownership, it's actually 100%. Each of you guys are owning 100% of how you show up in your relationship. And that also has to do with not just romantic or marriage or boyfriend, girlfriend relationships. It has to do with any relationship. So I'm a manager of people. If those people are failing at their jobs, I need to take 100% ownership and responsibility for my role in helping them succeed in their job. So all of this should be able to work in every area of your life with every relationship. Maybe mother, father, family members you don't get along really well with. Taking 100% ownership of what's my role in the interaction with me and that other person. So 100% ownership. Another good book moving forward, um, if you want to put this on your list, is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. And if you just want to get this vibe of personal growth, personal development, Jocko Willink has podcasts. He also has a YouTube channel. It's just called Jocko Podcast. That is my daily go-to. I love it. He's all about discipline. Discipline equals freedom. And he motivates me personally. He's a Navy SEAL, big guy, works out every day at 4.30 in the morning. So that's inspired me to get up earlier. And I'm like, okay, it's 5.30. I can get up and I can do my life. If he can do it, I can do it. Um, but another thing about, so we talk about ownership. Another takeaway is luck, right? Some people are like, oh, that person's so lucky. Like, let's say somebody has something that you want. Like, oh, they have their own TV show or they're whatever, they have their own TV show, they have a new car, whatever they have, um, or they're really in shape. A lot of times people will be like, yeah, that's easy for them because they're skinny or they're really in shape. Well, don't you think that they're making choices that makes them in shape? They didn't, they weren't just born like with a six pack as a little baby. Now, some people are, right? Like some people have different body types than us, but we can't compare ourselves to somebody that's six feet tall and 120 pounds if we are 5'1". That's just not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to set you up for success. So in talking about luck, a lot of times we're like, oh, that person was lucky. And then what do we do? We stop taking ownership for our own what, habits that we're doing, the things that we're doing. And we start projecting on them and saying, well, they're just lucky. And we start blaming. And how is that going to get us closer to our goals if we're just being jealous and we're saying, well, that person's just lucky and we're not recognizing that that person has done small, tiny things over and over again that is compounded to get them to where they want to be. So anything in your life right now, you have to take 100% ownership and responsibility for. If you don't like it, you have to be the one to start doing the changes. Now, the great thing about this book is it's not like you need to do one thing overnight and like, oh my gosh, I have to do everything because that seems so hard. You, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not really in line with like cleaning everything out of your pantry I would say to do it in a, in a certain strategy. So what I would say is like, what foods are triggering me right now? What things, if you're, if you're looking to kind of get in control of your eating habits, what foods trigger me? If peanut butter triggers me and I eat the whole jar, you need to stay away from peanut butter for now. Maybe you switch over to almond butter. So you're still having the almond butter, you're still having nut butter, but you're having something that you can control yourself around. If chips are your thing, maybe you don't get rid of them all together. Just don't buy the giant bag. Just get the little one pack and eat the one pack instead. So you're using portion control. All of this is figuring out what works, figuring out what doesn't work. But the good news is it's one small thing at a time. Um, there's another woman I'm going to interview. Her name is Linda. I cannot remember her last name right now, but it doesn't matter. Um, she is the co-founder of Tiny Habits Academy. And the great thing about this is, sorry, I just bumped that. The great thing about tiny habits is that you set them up really, really small. So let's say you're having trouble getting motivated to run outside. And the, the example that Darren gave in the book was good. He, he gave an example of just walking a loop, you know, walking a loop. But tiny habits even breaks it down farther. Tiny habit says, okay, I want to start jogging outside, but it's so hard. And I, can, I, I can't even get myself to do it. So don't even start with 10 minutes of walking because that for some people is even too much. It's too much of a jump. You want to do a tiny, 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 small thing that's going to get you to walking outside. So the first thing you do, find a trigger. That trigger point is whatever action you do a few times a day. So like a great thing would be when I brush my teeth or as soon as I get home 
and I rack my keys, that's going to be my trigger for me to put on my running shoes. So for a week, all you do is rack your keys, put on your running shoes. And then the next step of that is just celebrating and being like, cool, I've developed this new habit over a week. You get excited about it. You do a little dance, whatever. You're just building the habit of putting on your shoes. And then the next week, you rack your keys, you put on your shoes, you walk to the mailbox to get the mail. So now you have successfully got yourself outside with your shoes on, walk to the mailbox to get the mail. Maybe the third week. And celebration is a key component of like, well, I still didn't run a mile yet. It doesn't matter because you're doing those things that are consistently going to lead you up to running that mile. So the next week, after that, you're like, okay, I got the mail. Now I am going to walk down to the light post and back. So now you're walking down the light post and back. Next, you take it a little bit farther. Okay, I'm going to jog down the light post and back. You get to add on whatever you think you can design it yourself on what you want to do, but you keep adding it up. Okay, the next time I'm going to say, I'm going to go get the mail, I'm going to jog for 10 minutes, then I'm going to come back. So then you've already probably got about a, a half quarter mile to a half mile in. Before you know it, you'll be actually up in your mileage over time. So think about tiny habits. You're going to set a trigger. You're going to have a habit that you're building, a tiny, tiny one, and then you're going to celebrate. Because that physiology, if you watch Tony Robbins, another good thing to watch. I did this this weekend because I'm a binge watcher of Netflix. Um, I was watching How to Get Away with Murder, and I like it. But you notice watching something that's like dark and dreary can kind of affect your attitude. So I'm watching How to Get Away with Murder, and I'm just like murders and all this stuff. So I decided consciously to watch Tony Robbins on Netflix, and he had a uh, it's like an hour and a half documentary on Unleash the Power Within, which is one of his big events. And it's called I'm Not Your Guru. So I would suggest if you are a Netflix binge watcher, switch it over into some educational documentary things that are going to enrich and enhance your life. And I'm all about still watching that stuff that you love, like the murders or the gossipy shows. But you'll see soon enough in the next chapter, because I've already read ahead or listened ahead, we start to get our input and find out what kind of stuff we're putting in our life. And if we're putting in a bunch of gossip and a bunch of like drama, you're just going to feel icky. So putting in good stuff, like listening to audiobooks, podcasts, documentaries that are going to enrich your life is ultimately going to be better for you. But just change them out one by one. Um, TV Free May is coming up. So in May, last year, I did TV Free May. Um, and that was a good, like, dramatic, like, I need to go without it because it was actually really impacting my life. So if you have something like that, whether it's food, whether it's TV, whether it's a habit, whether it's being on Instagram or Facebook, maybe you do need to take it out for a moment in time so you can get control of it. Um, another good tiny habit to do is, well, every day I keep having a soda or a pop or whatever. I have one every day at 3 p.m. Maybe you can switch that into, I'm going to switch that to green tea. So now you're just making a swap. So it's small, it's tiny, but compounded over time, you're going to see the effects of that. So that's just a little bit. I gave you guys a brief overview of chapters one and two. Hopefully, you're going to keep following along. You're going to take some action steps towards this. Two things that we're doing this week on his website, which I already talked about, um, thecompoundeffect.com. Go to the resources. Download all of those downloads. One of them that's on there is your gratitude list. We are going to start doing that gratitude list. So print that out. Do it today over the next couple days. And then share it in the group if you are in the group right now watching this. Share it in the group. If you're not in the group, share it with somebody. Hopefully, if you're watching this and you're watching the replay and you are doing the Compound Book Compound Effect Book Club, you are doing with this with someone else for accountability because it's nice to have that person say, hey, look, I journaled my spending habits or I journaled my, my food or I journaled my time and how I'm using it. So get the gratitude, print that out. And then we're calling this the scorecard, the tracker, where you have a journal for the first week. You are tracking everything in that one area of your life. So pick one area. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't try to do more than one. Track it for one week, and then we'll check in after that. Um, moving forward, we're going to do Chapter 3 this week as well. I will pop in the group and do another video, possibly two other videos. Um, I'm trying to keep it scheduled, um, but... Things come up, so I may be off schedule, which is fine because you guys can always watch the replay. Post in the group if you have any questions, big ahas. The best thing for you guys is going to be being open. You don't have to share everything, but being open about what you're struggling with and then the tiny steps that you are going to take to get there.
So again, I shared my binge watching of Netflix. I actually canceled Netflix and then I relapsed and I got the free month again. Um, so step I'm going to take is I'm going to make sure I cancel today, set it up to cancel for next month. Anything that I'm watching on there, I am going to finish how to get away with murder because I'm almost done with season three. I'm going to finish that. And then anything that I choose on there is going to be life affirming documentary style. And I will be tracking how I'm using my time for this week. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.